Hello and welcome to the Wisconsin Department of Agriculture Trade and Consumer Protection Spotted Lanternfly Training for Industry. The goal of the Spotted Lanternfly inspections, trainings, and certifications is to protect agriculture and facilitate interstate commerce by limiting the human-aided spread of spotted lanternfly. After this training, you'll be better equipped to identify and inspect for spotted lanternfly to avoid spreading this invasive pest to new areas. This training covers spotted lanternfly's native range and history of introduction in the U.S., along with the basic biology, life cycle, host plant preferences, inspections, state-level quarantine regulations, and treatments you can use to reduce its impacts and slow the spread to new areas. Although spotted lanternfly has large, colorful wings, spotted lanternfly is not a moth, but a plant hopper or sucking insect related to cicadas, box elder bugs, and aphids. Spotted lanternfly is native to China, India, and Vietnam, where it is likely controlled by parasitic wasp. It has become invasive where it has been introduced in South Korea, Japan, and the United States, where it was first detected in Pennsylvania in 2014. This slide shows spotted lanternfly nymphs, adults, and egg masses, along with oozing sap on a tree resulting from spotted lanternfly stem eating. The spotted lanternfly is one of the fastest moving invasive pests in the United States. Spotted lanternfly has spread to at least 17 states from 2014 to 2023. Although spotted lanternfly is not known to be established in Wisconsin, Department of Agriculture Trained Consumer Protection has had spotted lanternfly regulatory interceptions of dead spotted lanternfly adults that have come in on items from the infested area in several southern and central counties in recent years. This slide shows areas of the United States most suitable for spotted lanternfly establishment based on suitable habitat and climate data. As you can see, most of Wisconsin is not expected to be suitable for SLF establishment due to our colder climate, although climate change and other factors could impact SLF's distribution over time. Next, we will look at the life cycle of the spotted lanternfly and learn to identify it in all its stages. The spotted lanternfly has one generation per year in the United States. First instar, or stage black and white, immatures, or nymph hatch from egg masses as early as April, before molting into larger second and third stage black and white nymphs in May and June. Larger fourth stage nymphs then appear in July. They are also wingless, but they are red and black with white spots. By September, the red nymphs change into spotted lanternfly adults, which feed, swarm, mate, and lay eggs. Spotted lanternfly adults persist until December or until they are killed by a hard frost. After mating, spotted lanternfly adults die, leaving egg masses to overwinter until the following spring when they will hatch. This slide shows spotted lanternfly with its wings closed and open on the left, along with cicadas, tiger moss, leopard moss, Atlantis webworms, milkweed bugs, and sphinx moss that are commonly mistaken for spotted lanternfly. It is important to correctly identify spotted lanternfly as chemicals like Bt that control moth larvae will have no effect on this pest. Spotted lanternfly nymphs can be mistaken for the red and black-brown marmorated stink bug nymphs. Although spotted lanternfly nymphs have white spots and there will not be a cluster of white hatched round eggs near spotted lanternfly nymphs since they are coming out of egg masses. This slide shows fresh and old spotted lanternfly egg masses that contain 30 to 80 eggs laid by females each fall. Initially, they look like shiny putty before they become weathered and look like dried cracked mud in late winter and spring. 
After hatching, egg masses look like four to seven rows of dark brown seeds as shown on the right. Spotted lanternfly egg masses can be mistaken for spongy moth egg masses. However, spotted lanternfly egg masses are more waxy and grayish while those of spongy moth are beige, felty, and spongy. Both insects are similar in that females will lay eggs on any flat surface, including stone, signs, deer stands, and vehicles. Laying eggs in many places helps spread these pests further and faster than if they are only laid egg masses on host plants. Now we will learn about spotted lanternfly host and the damage they can cause. Well, spotted lanternfly sucks the sap of stems, branches, and twigs of over 70 plant species. Some are much more strongly preferred than others. Although spotted lanternfly feeding does not usually kill the plants it feeds on, walnut saplings, grapevines, and tree of heaven can succumb to the pest. Spotted lanternfly cannot bite people, and it does not feed on fruit. But spotted lanternfly excretes sticky honeydew as it feeds, attracting wasp and causing black sooty mold to form. This can block sunlight from reaching fruit and leaves. Large numbers of spotted lantern fly can also cause a nuisance and make it unpleasant to be outside. SLF's feeding preferences change depending on its life stage, with nymphs preferring to feed on soft stems like roses, hops, and walnut seedlings. Later on, adults strongly prefer to feed on the invasive tree of heaven, along with grapevines, sumac, maple, willow, apple, and cherry trees. As mentioned previously, spotted lanternfly strongly prefers to feed on the fast-growing tree of heaven, a DNR-restricted invasive species mostly found in southern Wisconsin. Each female tree of heaven produces several hundred thousand seeds a year, so removing female trees is crucial to slowing its spread. Tree of heaven has compound leaves with smooth leaf margins, smooth gray boles, and light brown twigs. Leaves and male flowers smell like rancid peanuts. Tree of Heaven is often found in disturbed areas along roadsides, rail corridors, rivers, and unmaintained industrial areas. Many suspect that controlling Tree of Heaven now could reduce the impacts of spotted lanternfly when it gets here. This slide shows spotted lanternfly feeding on the bowl and branches of Tree of Heaven, its most preferred host plant. Because of this, Tree of Heaven is used to monitor for SLF and is also used as a trap tree to manage this pest. Spotted lanternfly infestations seriously threaten grapevines. Spotted lanternfly feeding causes increased winter injury, failure of vines to set fruit in the following year, lower nitrogen and carbohydrate levels in roots, decrease yields, and grapevine mortality. Vineyard owners may need to spray for spotted lanternfly adults in the fall as swarm after swarm arrives to feed. This can be a particular challenge if pests arrive during grape harvest. These fall swarms also make spotted lanternfly a serious nuisance pest that can hinder outdoor recreation, including fall winery and orchard tourism. Next, we'll look at how to conduct spotted lanternfly inspections. Spotted lanternfly is a weak flyer that travels only short distances on its own by walking, jumping, or flying. Unfortunately, SLF is adept at spreading long distances by hitchhiking on nursery stock, firewood, shipping containers, stone, cars, trucks, rail cars, and other materials. This slide shows SLF adults traveling on a tailpipe and wheel wells and egg masses on camp chairs. Because spotted lanternfly doesn't just move on plants, it is crucial to check for spotted lanternfly inside and outside vehicles, as well as protected areas like shrink wrap on packages, wheel wells and dollies or forklifts. Pennsylvania State Plant Regulatory Official Dana Rhodes described the need to check vehicles for spotted lanternfly when she stated, 
The longer you sit in an area, the more chances you have of picking up a hitchhiker. They will fly into the cab with you. If you have the cargo doors open on your truck, they're going to fly in the back. Next, we'll look at how to go over spotted lanternfly regulations and requirements for legally moving conveyances and products out of infested areas. At least 10 states have enacted quarantines for spotted lanternfly in order to prevent introductions into uninfested areas and to contain pest spread within states. The USDA APHIS does not plan to federally quarantine spotted lanternfly in order to focus resources on outreach, surveys, and pest management. Once spotted lanternfly is detected in Wisconsin, businesses will likely need to complete a spotted lanternfly training, have a compliance agreement with Department of Agriculture Trained Consumer Protection, or complete a spotted lanternfly inspection checklist before moving products into states to regulate spotted lanternfly. These measures will reduce risk of spreading spotted lantern fly to new areas. Next, we'll look at things we can do to slow the spread of spotted lantern fly, including chemical treatments, egg mass scraping, reporting and spreading the word about this invasive pest. Department of Agriculture Trade and Consumer Protection is doing a combination of things to prepare for spotted lantern fly, including conducting outreach on social media, billboards, our website, and at trade shows, monitoring for spotted lantern fly using visual surveys of Tree of Heaven and with baited circle traps, and by creating trainings like this one. Next, we'll cover some of the ways spotted lanternfly is being managed, including applying pesticides to plants to control spotted lanternfly damage, creating tree of heaven trap trees, netting vineyard perimeters to keep spotted lanternfly out, scraping egg masses, and a technique known as hack and squirt used to kill tree of heaven. While research is underway, there are currently no commercially available biocontrols for spotted lanternfly. The slide shows various pesticides that can legally be used to effectively kill spotted lanternfly adults, nymphs, and egg masses. With all the media stories about spotted lanternfly out there, it is crucial to emphasize that the label is the law. People that encounter spotted lanternfly should not overreact or use toxic home remedies to kill this pest. This slide shows a tree of heaven trap tree that has been treated with pesticide. You can see the dead spotted lanternfly at the base of the tree that died when they came to feed on it. Trap trees work well when you leave a small number of male trees that do not produce seeds near a vineyard or nursery to draw spotted lantern fly away from high value crops. Fine mesh netting can be used around the perimeters of vineyards to prevent SLF from reaching grapes because SLF tends to swarm at the edges of these properties. While it can be expensive and it can block some solar rays from reaching netted grapes, it can be effective and it reduces the cost of spraying swarms each fall. Scraping spotted lanternfly egg masses into a bottle of alcohol or hand sanitizer between September and June can be an effective way to reduce the number of nymphs that will emerge the following year. Because spotted lanternfly often lays eggs on metal poles, these egg masses can be burned with a torch. This slide shows hack and squirt, an effective treatment to method for controlling tree of heaven that is made by making a series of evenly spaced downward cuts into the bark to form small cups around the tree. Herbicide is then applied to each cut where it is taken up into the tree. Heck and squirt is not intended to girdle the tree because you need to leave some space between each cut to allow herbicide to be transported through the tree's conductive system. Best results occur by using hack and squirt between June and September while Tree of Heaven is actively growing. Now that we've learned about the life stages and life cycle of SLF and how to manage it, we are hopefully better prepared for its arrival in Wisconsin. 
DADCAP has created a website at slf.wi.gov with a video fact sheet, reporting form, and other information where you can learn about this invasive pest. Other links on this page include more information about tree of heaven identification and removal and fact sheets from our other federal and state partners. Hopefully, early detection of SLF in Wisconsin will allow for an effective, rapid response to this pest and help minimize its impacts on your business. This concludes our Spotted Lanternfly training. To verify your completion of this online training, please open your browser once you are finished watching this video and navigate to the site linked to the QR code on this slide or visit https colon backslash backslash tinyurl.com backslash slfwi23. Once you reach that site, you will enter your contact information and complete a short spotted lanternfly quiz. After successfully completing the online quiz, you'll receive a certified spotted lanternfly ID number via email along with information verifying your completion of this training. Thank you for attending our spotted lanternfly training today. My name is Miranda Luma and I'm a regulatory specialist with Plant Protection Section at Department of Agriculture, Trade and Consumer Protection. Please contact me with any spotted lanternfly questions you have or learn more on our website at slf.wi.gov. Have a great day.